Do do di. It's Nandi. Hello, friends. We're back today with another quest video. This time for the Blood Angels character Mataneo. You know the drill. I'll show you each stage, the characters I've used, and some tips in commentary and text format. You can see the characters we used and the required rarities on this slide. Kyle, the Snowprint developer who designs these events, uses Gold 2 and ability levels at 42 for the Legendary node. Accordingly, I have used the same cutoffs, but you'll have a much easier time if your characters exceed those thresholds. Before we enter the stages, here are two quick things about this quest. Firstly, we fight the orcs in this quest, and they have the battle fatigue trait, meaning that they have a 10 to 50% chance of fleeing the battle when one of their nearby allies dies. This can make repeating the exact runs I've shown here slightly more difficult. Secondly, a quick reminder that the AI likes to target summons. Mataneo creates two intercessors every turn through his passive ability, so if you can position carefully, then you'll be able to save yourself lots of damage on your main characters. Common one is reasonably straightforward. Godswill and Bellator kill the left-sided Grots, and Mataneo attacks the middle Grot, creating two intercessors. The enemy Grots then focus their attacks on the newly created summons, and you're able to finish the battle on turn 2. For common 2, we send Vindicta up the left ledge to attack, and Mataneo attacks the right flank. Bellator and Certus kill the Grot in the middle. Vindicta's active does the bulk of the heavy lifting on turn 2, and this finishes off the majority of the grots in the middle. On turn 3, it's simply a case of cleanup. Common 3 is tricky, and I'll pause for a second for you to copy the positioning. God's Will kills the left sided grot tank to start. Thoriad and Certus finish off the right Grot tank, and Mataneo flies into the middle to attack the orc. Snotflogger will move down and summon some Grots, and you need to be a little bit lucky here not to have those summons hit Mataneo. On turn 2, Mataneo uses his active on Snotflogger and flies behind him. Vindicta remains stationary and attacks twice through her active ability. You then get the two Black Templars to clean up. I'm not showing you legendary characters here, but if you have Ragnar, Warhowl makes this fight a lot easier. Uncommon 1 is reasonably straightforward, but relies a little bit on critical hit luck. We use Mataneo's active on the bottom group of Grots to kill them all. I then use Godswill's active to push the Grot tank along the bridge, and then nuke all of the orcs with Vindicta. As you know, Vindicta has a trait called Act of Faith, which increases her critical hit chance as Imperial allies kill enemies. So, by using her at the end of the attack sequence, you maximize your crit chance and damage. For Uncommon 2, the key is Thoriad, who gives units an additional melee hit provided they are within two hexes. Once he is positioned as shown on screen, the remainder of our units clean the battlefield up. For Uncommon 3, we start with Mataneo's active on the northeast group of Grot tanks. Burchard goes next with an active against the Grots, killing most of them. Our next three characters finish off Tank Smasher in the middle. The rest of the battle is simply a case of attacking the remaining units and making sure your own stay healthy. I haven't needed to use Incisus' heals for this battle, as you'll notice the Grots fled on turn 1, but you'll have your own variability depending on which units flee your battle. Rare 1 is an excellent example of how the enemy AI prefers targeting the summoned units. The two Black Templars here are just a couple of bruisers, and this stage is enabled by the fact that the Grot tanks keep attacking Mataneo's intercessors. We work through the level as shown on screen. For Rare 2, we are positioned as shown here. We start with Varro's active, which does chain damage to all enemy units in the gorge. We follow up with Mataneo's active to finish off the bulk of the enemies, and Incisus, who doesn't actually need to do any healing, 
kills off another orc. The rest of the battle is similar to the previous stage. The Grot tanks focus their attacks on Mataneo's summons, and we finish off the battle without taking any damage. For Rare 3, we use Mataneo to clear the right orc, and Varro and Certus to clear the left. The Grots in the middle advance towards us, but aren't able to attack us on turn 1. On turn 2, we use Mataneo's active on the top right group of Grots, and that is the last significant move of the level. We finish off the remaining enemies on our subsequent turn. For Rare 4, the key thing to do is actually stay back and hold position on turn 1. Orc Storm Boys beset us on turn 1, and this positioning allows us to deal with them and heal before turning our attention to the advancing horde. There isn't really any artistry and specifics to deal with the rest of the battle. As long as you aren't overwhelmed on turn 1, you can heal and fight through the rest of the enemies. I've left my run on screen here, but your results may vary. Rare 5 is another 5 character level, and accordingly, players face off against too many enemies for the solution to be artistic or have much flair. As with the other 5 character levels, it becomes a slog of keeping your units healthy and healed while whittling down the enemy forces. There are a few key moves that I found for this battle. First, you want to use Mataneo's active on turn 1 against Gibba Scraps. Certus and Varro kill the middle Grot tank, and Vindicta sets some orcs on fire on the bottom left. Vindicta uses her active on turn 2, which should give you enough of a framework to finish the battle relatively easily. You might get slightly different results depending on which orcs flee, but I've left my run on screen to play out in case it helps you. Epic 1 is pretty straightforward. You want to sequence your attacks to give Vindicta the best chance of critical hits. Start with Mataneo's active on the bottom right, Grotz. Godswill should be able to solo kill the middle orc. Use Vindicta to kill the last group in the bottom left with her boosted critical hit chance and damage. For Epic 2, we face Storm Boys that come flying onto the map. The key to this stage is positioning your units on the high ground on the right side of the map. This way, there are limited hexes from which the Storm Boys can attack you. Once the Storm Boys land, as long as they haven't killed a character, it's pretty easy to finish the fight. The theme of summons distracting the AI continues, and you slowly pick off the enemies while the boys are distracted. As I've said before, the 5 man levels and solutions aren't particularly elegant. I'm showing my Epic 3 solution here on screen for what it's worth. I use Burchard to free up the middle hexes, and allow Vindicta to use her active to clear both flanks. After that, I use summons to keep the enemy distracted and finish the battle. Be mindful of the storm boys that will come in and likely target your more fragile units. I struggle with showcasing the legendary missions for these videos because so much of the solution is individualized to your roster and who you have leveled. The Snowprint developer for the quests uses non-legendary characters capped at gold 2 and abilities at 42. The run now uses the same cutoffs, but you'll have more success if your characters are stronger. I recommend some key moves, such as holding your forces back in the bottom right corner of the map for turn 1. After the enemy advances, you can use Mataneo's active to do a big chunk of area of effect damage, and use summons to mitigate enemy damage for the remainder of the battle. I've left my attempt on screen for the sake of it, but it's unlikely you'll get an exact replica with your own roster. I'll maybe sign off there. I've just started a Patreon for my channel. If you're fortunate enough to be in a position to support me and my content, I'd love it if you could check it out. I want to give all of my current Patreons a massive shout out for enabling me to have a platform to continue doing this sort of work. If not, I've left my refer a friend code here on screen. Entering it earns yourself 100 Blackstone and supports me in the work that I do. It is single use though, so choose who you support carefully. Bye for now. Doo -doo -dee.
It's Nandi.